This is part one of a two-part video series on the National Consumer Law Center, a member database available to you, Jenkins members, 24-7 from your desktops at home or in the office, asterisk. And the asterisk is the publisher has put a restriction on us. We can only offer this database remotely, you know, from your desktop at home or in the office, to solo attorneys and to attorneys who are members of firms of between two and ten attorneys. So solos and small firms can access uh, NCLC remotely. Okay, and if that if that means you, all you got to do is access JenkinsLaw.org, log in with your last name and your member number. When you get taken to the member center, which lists all the accessible databases, you'll see. Now National Consumer Law Center, okay? And if the button there is there, then you can access it. If you click that button, you'll get taken here. I saved us a couple of seconds by pre-clicking. For those of you that um, started researching as attorneys back in the pre-digital age, you may remember these, these kind of khaki colored books with the stripes at the top of the bottom. That's what I'm talking about. There are 20 of them. I remember these back in the day, and that's what we're going to be searching. And speaking of searching, you know, where's the search box? Well, this website has a bit of responsive design going on and it does key on you know how big your screen resolution is how large or how small it is right now this particular uh, PC that I am recording this video on does not have a great screen resolution it's actually you know kinda low so I actually have to click this um, uh, magnifying glass to see the search box okay and let me show you what it looks like on my laptop I'm gonna uh, zoom it to about 90%. This is what it looks like on my laptop because I have a greater screen resolution. So it's going to change based on the size of your screen resolution. Be aware of that. It's not the end of the world. And in fact, um, I'm glad that it does it on this PC because I can show you some, some things to be aware of um, on this particular video. Okay, so I'm going back to the way I had it before, which is what it looks like with this particular resolution. And I've actually pre typed the search term that I'm going to use throughout this video forgiveness because we we're all searching for forgiveness and I've got the results now on my laptop the results are on the right hand side and the limits are on the left hand side however again based on the resolution it looks a little jarring but you actually have to scroll down and there they are there's 300 uh, 376 hits now this kind of mega search I'm not a big fan of this but sometimes you have absolutely no idea which volume or where to start or whatever so you say search them all just tell me where I should start and that's not the end of the world and you know you could actually filter and say okay well just show me just the 125 chapters that have my term in them okay and as you scroll through you can see things for like student loan law consumer class actions and so forth so these are the individual treatises there and you might see what you want exactly in that list and that's great or it may be a way to say hey maybe I want to look at student loan law and look at that more in depth and that's what I'm going to do I'm not saying you got to do this all the time I'm just saying these are your options so if you scroll up to the top you know you got some options here you want to click my treatises and it lists the 20 treatises available to you you know as part of this subscription so let's say for example I pick student loan law okay now here's the volume here's the treatise now there's a weird overlap going on there just want you to know let me get this out of the way early um, just you know click the arrow and it takes it away you want it back click the arrow so again it's not it's not it's not great that that I get this overlappy thing based on my screen resolution but I can deal with it it's not the end of the world so here is the table of contents which is um, it's kinda cool that I can oops, wrong one sorry it's kinda cool that I can look at the table of contents what's even better though is the index and I'm not being old old school in this I'm just saying these indexes are quite useful um, if you know where you want to go for example I'm gonna stick with forgiveness you pick the letter okay and let me see if I cannot give us all vertigo by scrolling down for forgiveness. I could have searched it, which would have made our lives easier, um, you know, in this video, but whatever. Oh, forgiveness of loans, see cancellation of loans. So I can actually click here, and it will do a search. Uh, not do a search, it will actually, you know, go back to that appropriate section. Or I could, if I wanted, you know, type in. cancellation or even as I'm typing it it does an anticipation thing that Google does for me as well so you know the index I find is one of the really highlights and the strengths of these individual volumes along with the searching obviously and so here we have you know public service attorneys cancellation of loans Ooh, maybe that's what I want so if I go there uh, 
oh, yeah, uh, overlap. That's all right. Get rid of it. Don't don't worry about it. Okay. So here's the section that I was interested in. Okay. And you can read them, decide what you're interested in. Just want to point out the footnotes. Sometimes the footnotes are hyperlinked. Sometimes they're not. It's based on the context. In this case, none of the footnotes are hyperlinked. I happen to know that the previous section teacher loan forgiveness does have some hyperlinked footnotes. For example, this URL to a Department of Education website and these sections are also um, hyperlinked as well. Really depends on the context. I can't say for sure they're always going to be or they're always not going to be. Just be aware of that, but they try to do as much as they can do here. Okay. The last thing that I wanted to talk to you about is this. If you, um, let me scroll up to the top here, you like this particular section. If you want to download it, look for the download box, which is that. And you click on it to based on how your browser works. It's either going to dump it down, like Chrome just dumps it. Um, Firefox might ask you what you want to do with it. Whatever, you know, it's up to you, however you want to deal with it. And here is the particular section that I downloaded. This is an indexed PDF, which means I can copy and paste from it. You know, here I've highlighted some stuff. Copy. Um, I can search within it. Okay. There you go. Find me the next loan in there. There you go. All the way through. So, you know, these, these uh, PDFs are not just like lousy looking scan, uh, scanned copies from the pages. They're actually quite useful because they're indexed and searchable. So this is the first part, how to sort of navigate, how to deal with navigation issues, how to do a bit of searching. Um, there are always uh, search tips available if you want them. And if you want even more information, you can email call or chat with a Jenkins reference librarian and he or she will give you um, some help working with the NCLC database.